So we have seen how the base 10 number system works by using the digits 0 through 9 and then adding place values to create numbers bigger than 9. Digital circuits, on the other hand, only understand on and off, high or low, true or false. So for a digital circuit to count, there can only be two digits, 0 and 1. This is called the binary number system. Fundamentally, it works the same way as the decimal number system. To create numbers bigger than one, we add a place value and keep going. Since there are only two digits, this means that the size of the numbers swell fairly quickly. Let's look at how to count in binary while simultaneously looking at the decimal equivalent. Zero is zero, one is one, and now we've run out of binary digits. So we add one to the tens place and start over in the ones place. This means that a decimal number 2 is 10 in binary. 3 is 11, and again we've exhausted our binary numbers. Adding 1 to the tens place gives us 10, so we add 1 to the hundreds place. So 4 in binary is 100. 5 is 101, 6 is 110, and 7 is 111. This continues on and on, just like decimal numbers would continue on. Now when we talked about decimal numbers, we reviewed the concept of expanded form. We can express binary numbers in expanded form as well. Since it is a base 2 number system, the base of the exponent is 2. Using expanded form of a binary number, we can find what decimal number is being represented. So let's look at 1010. The 1's place gets an exponent of 0. The 10's place gets an exponent of 1. The hundreds place gets an exponent of 2, and the thousands place gets an exponent of 3, just like decimal numbers. So in expanded form, we have 1 times 2 to the third, 0 times 2 to the second, 1 times 2 to the first, and 0 times 2 to the zero. Adding this all up, we get 8 plus 2, which is 10. 1010 is the binary number representation of the decimal number 10. It's interesting to note that the ones place is either 1 times 2 to the 0 power or 0 times 2 to the 0 power. If the binary digit is 0, there's nothing to add to the preceding numbers. Since all the preceding numbers are multiples of 2, the number must be even. If the binary digit is 1, then we are adding 1 to the preceding even multiples of 2. Therefore, the number must be an odd number. So binary digits ending in 0 are even, and binary digits ending in 1 are odd. Representing decimals, that is, decimal fractions, not the base 10 number system, is also done in the same manner as the decimal number system. The tenths place is 2 to the negative 1 power, the hundredths place is 2 to the negative 2 power, the thousandths place is 2 to the negative third power, and so on. So, 10.11 in decimal form is found by using the expanded form 1 times 2 to the first power, plus 0 times 2 to the 0 power, plus 1 times 2 to the negative 1 power, plus 1 times 2 to the negative 2 power. Remember that a negative exponent means taking the reciprocal of the number. So, 2 to the negative first is 1 half, and 2 to the negative 2 is 1 over 2 squared, which is 1 fourth. So the decimal number represented by the binary number 10.11 is 2 plus 1 half plus 1 fourth, which is 2.75. Finding the binary representation of a decimal number is a little more involved. If multiplication is used to go from binary to decimal, the inverse operation, division, is used to perform the inverse, going from decimal to binary. So let's start simple. Let's find the binary representation of 11. We start with the number 11 at the top of your workspace. Divide this by 2, since we are translating into binary, and we get 5 with 1 left over. Place the remainder in a column next to the 9. This is now the remainder column. Now write the 5 in the next row. Now divide by 2 again. This time we get 2 with 1 remainder. So place the 1 remainder in the remainder column next to the 5 and the 2 on the next row. Divide by 2 again 
and we get one with no remainder. The zero remainder goes in the remainder column, and the one goes on the next row. Finally, we divide one by two and get zero with one remainder. We place the remainder next to the one in the remainder column and our repeated division is complete. The number is read from the bottom of the remainder column to the top. This gives us 1011. Before we move on to decimals, we need to talk about least significant and most significant bits. The leading number in any base number system is the most significant. By changing this first number, you change the value of the number the most it can possibly be changed. So think of it this way. If you stood on a scale expecting to see 150 pounds, but it said 250 pounds, that would be pretty significant. So in contrast, the last digit is the least significant digit because changing this digit does not affect the value quite as much. If the scale said 152 pounds, you wouldn't be quite as shocked since two pounds is not nearly as significant as 100 pounds. Getting back to our repeated division method of finding binary numbers, the last remainder we found when we divided one by two is the most significant bit in the binary number. This is why we wrote it first. The first remainder we got when we divided 11 by two is the least significant bit. This is important because when we switch over to the decimal side of the decimal number, this switches on us. Remember that decimals are fractions and fractions are division problems. To do the inverse would be repeated multiplication of twos instead of repeated division. For the whole number side, the object was to get to zero. For the decimal numbers, the object is to get to one. Since we're now multiplying instead of dividing, we no longer have a remainder column. Instead, we have a carry column. When a multiplication by two puts us over the decimal place, we put that one in the carry column. And since we're multiplying instead of dividing, our first multiplication is the most significant, and the last multiplication, when the answer comes to one exactly, is the least significant. Let's look at 0 0.3125 and convert it to binary. 0 0.3125 times 2 is 0 0.625. There was no carry into the ones place, so we put 0 into the carry column. 0 0.625 goes on the second row and now we multiply it by 2. This is 1.25. We now have a 1 that was carried into the 1's place, so we put the 1 in the carry column and the 0 0.25 on the next row. 0 0.25 times 2 is 0 0.5. No carry, so we place 0 in the carry column and 0 0.5 on the next row. Finally, 0 0.5 times 2 is 1.0. So the 1 goes into the carry column and we are finished having reached 1 by repeated multiplication. This time, the most significant bit is the top digit in the carry column and the least significant bit is the bottom digit. So 0 0.3125 in binary is 0 0.0101. So that's going to do it for this video. It was quite a bit of information to take in, but practice on your own converting back and forth and it will quickly become second nature. The cool thing about this is that we're going to use the same process for the octal and the hexadecimal number systems. All the concepts are exactly the same, it's just the base that changes. So keep that in mind as we move along through Unit 2. In the next video we'll be learning how to do arithmetic in binary. So see you next time.